ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to forewarn you, uh, we're going to beginning, we'll, we will be beginning the ceremony with the firing of a World War II 37 millimeter anti-tank gun located off to my left, your right. Uh, the, uh, the detonation is rather a thunderous. I just wanted to give you a little forewarning. Thank you. <laughs> Sergeant Bryan, stage your weapon. You may fire at will. Please fire, clear gun. The gentlemen, Staff Sergeant Retired Clark Bryan and the men of G Company 180th Infantry Living Historian. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mike Gonzalez. I'm the curator of the 45th Infantry Division Museum. I'd like to welcome you to our ceremony day and thank you for coming out. Memorial Day holds a special meaning for those of us who have served or are now serving in the Armed Forces of the United States. It gives us a chance to honor those who paid the supreme sacrifice for our freedoms that we are all enjoying today. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and direct your attention off to your left for the massing of the colors. Sergeant Major, mask the colors. 45th Infantry Brigade Combat Team.
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag Color guards will be at rest. Gives me great pleasure to introduce Chaplain Dunn, a chaplain for the headquarters, headquarters company, 700 Support Battalion, Oklahoma Army National Guard. Chaplain. Almighty God, as we pause today to recognize those who gave all in the defense of liberty, we look to you for consolation and wisdom. Help us never to forget the selfless sacrifice and devotion offered by so many. May the memory of those loved ones lost serve to heal the wounds of those left behind. As we remember those who fell, we honor those who returned. Thank you for these veterans assembled here, their strength of character and fortitude. May everything we say and do here today be to your honor and glory. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Chaplain. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our distinguished platform guests. It is requested that each of them stand as they are introduced and remain standing until all the introductions have been made. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to hold your applause until the uh, finality of the introductions. To my right, your far left, is Preston Willoughby, representing the 45th Infantry Division Veterans Association. Excellent. Next is our keynote speaker, Brigadier General Robbie Asher. Seated next is Chaplain Jeremy Dunn. To my far left is Ms. Ashton Vincent. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In our audience are distinguished guests who deserve special recognition. Will all World War II veterans please stand and be recognized? Will all Korean War veterans please stand and be recognized? Will all Vietnam War veterans please stand 
can be recognized. Will all Cold War veterans please stand and be recognized? Will all Gulf War veterans please stand and be recognized? Will all veterans of the Global War on Terror please stand and be recognized? Will all veterans serving members of the Armed Forces of the United States of America please rise and be recognized? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you our faces to the privilege to have with us today the governor's own 145th Army Band. They are now going to present us with the service songs followed by America the Beautiful. When you hear your service song being played, please stand. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, the 145th Army Band. Outstanding. We'd also like to thank Ms. Aspen Vincent uh, for her performance here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Aspen Vincent. Our keynote speaker today is Brigadier General Robbie L. Asher. He is the Director of Joint Staff, Joint Forces Headquarters. He serves as the primary assistant to the Adjutant General with overall responsibility and oversight of more than a thousand full-time employees of the Oklahoma Army National Guard and is directly supervises all staff directors and the five major brigade size subordinate command of full-time officers. General Asher was commissioned in 1981 through the ROTC program at the University of Oklahoma. Prior to receiving his commission, General Asher served on active duty with the 101st Airborne Division as an enlisted member for two years, followed by five years enlisted service in the Oklahoma Army Guard. Upon commissioning, General Asher served in a variety of infantry and anti-armor and personnel assignments. He commanded the 1st Battalion of 279th Infantry prior to his selection as Deputy Commander of the 45th Infantry Brigade. He deployed with the Brigade to Afghanistan in 2003-2004. Soon after General Asher's return, he was selected to serve as Chief Joint Staff in the Joint Forces Headquarters. He was assigned to his current position as Director Joint Staff in December of 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Brigadier General Robbie L. Asher. Good morning, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. Major Benson, Stacy, you should be very proud of her. She did a great job, and for everyone else, you should just be thankful that I wasn't seeing it. <laughs> I'm humbled to have the opportunity to address you on such, such a special day for our nation. It is truly a great honor to be here with you on Memorial Day. Before I begin my remarks, I'd like to thank the tremendous team we have working here at this wonderful museum. The leadership and countless volunteers deserve the utmost praise for maintaining one of the greatest military museums in the United States. And as Mike has already mentioned, I also want to thank the, our own 145th Army Band for the great job they've done today, as always. At this time, I ask that each of us take a moment to remember the Oklahomans impacted by the last week's tornadoes in Shawnee, Newcastle, South Oklahoma City, and the Moore area, and especially the families of the 24 fatalities. As we gather here today, Hundreds of Oklahoma Army and Air National Guardsmen are supporting these recovery operations. Before last week's tornado, I'm sure the vast majority of these Guardsmen were making plans to spend this holiday weekend with their friends and families. But that's not the life of a, the citizen soldier. When a domestic catastrophe hits in Oklahoma, you can always count on the Guard to always ready and always be there. And without a doubt, they're performing superbly and with distinction. For all of you in attendance that have worn the Thunderbird, I tell you with pride that the soldiers and airmen in the Oklahoma National Guard carry on your legacy of exceptional service to both our state and nation. Today we gather to commemorate a holiday with the most solemn purpose. To remember those men and women who have died while serving the United States of America. We must never forget those that gave their last full measure for the sake of our nation. And we will always cherish the memories we have of the soldiers, sailors, 
airmen, and marines that have died so that our, our nation could remain free. The 45th Infantry Division and Oklahoma National Guard personifies the patriotism and valor to which this day is dedicated. During World War II, soldiers from the 45th Infantry Division partic participated in combat operations from Sicily to Munich. The Fighting 45th, as they were known, spent 511 days in combat, earning the nickname the Rock of Anzio. The division participated in eight major campaigns and four amphibious landings. Eight Thunderbirds were awarded the Medal of Honor and 77 received the Distinguished Service Cross. In all, some 405,000 American soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen, along with a handful of civilians, made the ultimate sacrifice to defeat Germany, Japan, and Italy. And after World War II, the 45th Infantry Division was one of only two National Guard divisions mobilized for the Korean War. The 45th again performed its duties with honor, receiving four campaign streamers and the Presidential Unit Citation for 429 days in combat. One member received the Medal of Honor for his gallantry under fire. The 45th was the first National Guard Division to face the enemy in Korea. During the summer of 1952, the division fought landmark battles at Alligator Jaws, Port Chop Hill, and Old Baldy. Vietnam saw involvement of the Oklahoma National Guard, but this time from our Air Force component. The 137th Air Transport Wing, Oklahoma Air National Guard, flew the C-97 Strato Freighter with supplies and cargo to Vietnam and surrounding areas to support the war effort. The Vietnam era warfighter, more than any other, was maligned and overlooked for far too long by the American public. I am grateful that our nation collectively began to understand this wrong and has openly begun to honor our Vietnam vets. Today, let us pause and remember the ultimate sacrifice made by the 58,000 Americans in Southeast Asia. After 25 years of peace, the American military, to include the National Guard, was called upon to impede Saddam Hussein. During Desert Shield and Desert Storm, more than 3,000 Oklahoma Army and Air National Guard soldiers and airmen from across the state deployed to the Middle East. Many of those units mobilized for Desert Shield and Desert Storm. As I look out across the audience, I see many of those old soldiers and those old airmen here today. Those units came from across the state. The 137th Tactical Airlift Wing out of Oklahoma City. The 2120th Supply and Service Company out of Awoka and Kanawha. The 1120th Maintenance Company out of Ada the 445th Military Police Company out of McAllister, the 745th Military Police Company out of Oklahoma City, the 12th, 1245th Transportation Company out of Medill and Tishomingo, the 1345th Transportation Company out of Ardmore, the headquarters of the 120th Medical Battalion out of Midwest City, the 145th Medical Company out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, the 245th Medical Company out of Midwest City, and the 1st Battalion, 158th Field Artillery from Lawton and Southwest Oklahoma. A decade after the start of Desert Storm, our country found itself thrust into combat by the cowardly acts of terrorists. The attacks of September 11, 2001, motivated an entire generation to service. We all remember where we were on that fateful day. And within hours, young men and young women by the thousands showed up at recruiting stations across the country. And shortly thereafter, the Oklahoma National Guard was called upon to participate in operations Noble Eagle, Enduring Freedom, 
and Iraqi freedom. Task Force Tomahawk, commanded by Major Mike Thompson, included Companies A and Company B of the 179th Infantry Battalion. They deployed to secure Patriot sites in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And when the Iraqi war began, Company B, commanded by Captain Colby Wyatt, moved into Iraq. And Task Force Tomahawk, led by Mike Thompson, was the first National Guard unit to enter Iraq when the war started. In 2003, the 45th Infantry Brigade, commanded by General Tom Mancina, Mancino, deployed to Afghanistan to train, mentor, and fight alongside the Afghan National Army. Shortly thereafter, the 120th Engineer Battalion deployed to Iraq in 2004, and the Oklahoma National Guard suffered our first casualty of the global war on terrorism. In 2005, the 1st Battalion, 180th Infantry, deployed to Afghanistan. And the National Guard, the Oklahoma National Guard, suffered our second casualty of the war. The 45th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, this time commanded by General Miles Deering, mobilized and deployed to Iraq in 2007. Shortly thereafter, in 2008, Detachment 1, Company B, 2nd of the 149th General Support Aviation Battalion deployed to Iraq. And the Oklahoma National Guard suffered three additional casualties from the war. Also in 2008, the 45th Fires Brigade from Oklahoma, commanded by Colonel Glenn Moore, mobilized and deployed to Kuwait and Iraq. The 45th Infantry Brigade again deployed to Afghanistan in 2011. During this deployment, members of the 45th suffered more than 300 battle-related injuries, were awarded more than 180 Purple Heart medals, and suffered 14 casualties. And as the Oklahoma National Guard was the first guard unit in Iraq when the war started, in 2011, F-16s from the 138th Fighter Wing in Tulsa, Oklahoma were in Iraq to provide combat air support for withdrawal of all remaining coalition forces during the final days of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Today, we currently have engineers and aviation units mobilized and deployed to Afghanistan. And that I would ask that you please keep those soldiers and their families in your hearts and prayers. Those of us that wear or have worn the uniform could not do what we do for our state and nation without the love and support of our families and communities. If you are a family member of a veteran from any war, please stand to allow us to recognize the sacrifices you have made to our state and nation. As I prepared to deliver my comments today, it became abundantly clear that while Memorial Day is about recognizing our war dead, it's also a day to honor the families and loved ones of those left behind. It's impossible for me to think about outstanding soldiers we've lost fighting the war on terror without thinking about the families of the 18 men and one woman from the Oklahoma National Guard who have, we have lost on the battlefield since 9-11. I know Memorial Day is for honoring the war dead, but this should also be a day when we reach out to those still living who truly lost the most. The spouses, mothers, fathers, and children of those who didn't make it home. If you've lost a family member or loved one in war, any war, would you please stand? While they're not here,
I'd ask that you please keep them in your heart and your prayers. Standing here today, I feel blessed to call myself an Oklahoman because I truly believe more than in any other state, our citizens understand what today is all about. I'll never forget the citizens of this state that came out by the thousands to pay their respects to our fallen. But my friends, I suggest to you that Memorial Day is not served well if it is a day of sadness alone. We are all charged, especially those of us that have worn the uniform, to ensure that today celebrates the lives of our friends who gave their complete physical being for our nation. Even though we feel great sadness and remorse about their loss, we must celebrate and recognize their special standing on this uniquely American holiday. We must never forget the fallen heroes who have paved the path, the path of freedom with their lives. May God bless you, the families and friends of our fallen, and the United, United States of America. Thank you. Thank you very much, General Lasher. Ladies and gentlemen, over my right shoulder is a marble bench commissioned by a World War II veteran of the 45th Infantry Division, Mr. Jack Hollowell, a resident of Colorado. He was with the 157th Infantry Regiment and was one of the original liberators of the concentration camp at Dachau. Upon his passing, this bench was delivered here to the museum to serve as Mr. Hollowell's testament of love for all the men that he served with during the Second World War. We want to thank him and his family for this beautiful and poignant donation. Again, the 45th Infantry Division Museum is delighted to have with us Mr. Preston Willoughby, representing the 45th Infantry Division Veterans Association. Mr. Willoughby will now be escorted by members of the Governor's Honor Guard from the platform for the traditional laying of the reef at the base of our flagpole. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand for the presentation of the wreath, the playing of taps, the benediction, and the retirement of the colors. Detail, please present the memorial wreath. Bandmaster, once the wreath has been placed at the base of the flagpole, please have your bugler sound taps. wives, sons, brothers, sisters, and daughters. The pain of their loss is still fresh for many. We are grateful that your heart is touched by our grief and that you provide grace in our times of distress. May the sacrifice of their lives inspire us as a nation to live up to the ideals of our founding. Help us as we seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Amen.
retire the colors.